Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Welcome to my clinical biochemistry playlist. In one of my previous videos in the other biochemistry playlist, we talked about the difference between reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. If you remember, here is the general rule of thumb. Monosaccharides are reducing sugars, and they include glucose, galactose, fructose. However, disaccharides and polysaccharides are not reducing sugars. They do not react with the Tollen reagent or the Benedict reagent. So if I see glucose in my urine, well, that's a reducing sugar. How about sucrose in the urine? That's a non-reducing sugar. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order and refer to the previous video called monosaccharides in my biochemistry for MCAT playlist. Recall that your diet is made of carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. The big carbs are called polysaccharides. When you break them down, you have disaccharides. Disaccharide is made of two monosaccharides. Why do we call them carbohydrates? Because they are hydrated carbons. Look at that. You have the carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms. If that carbohydrate has three carbon atoms, we call it triose. How about four carbons? Tetrose, five, pentose, and six is hexose. A famous triose is glyceraldehyde. How about tetrose? Erythrose. How about a pentose? Ribose and ribulose. How about a hexose, glucose, fructose, and galactose? Some carbohydrates have an aldehyde group. We call them aldose sugars or simply aldose. How about the others that have a ketone group? We call them keto sugars or ketose. And then when I give you the ring structure, if you have an aldehyde group, you are a hemiacetal. How about a keto group, hemiketal? Look at all of these lovely isomers, glucose, galactose, mannose, fructose. All of them are hexose sugars. Please do not confuse mannose with maltose. Mannose is a monosaccharide. Maltose is a disaccharide made of two glucose molecules. If you add monosaccharide to monosaccharide and make a glycosidic bond, what do you get? Disaccharide. And then keep adding, 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 you end up with polysaccharide. Name the bond or the linkage, glycosidic linkage. What is oxidation in chemistry? Either gaining an oxygen or losing a hydrogen or losing electron. What is reduction in chemistry? The opposite, I'm losing an oxygen or I'm gaining a hydrogen or I'm gaining a negative electron. And therefore, if you are capable of being oxidized, it means that you are being oxidized while someone else is being reduced simultaneously. It's the oxidation-reduction reaction or the redox reaction. That's why if you're capable of being oxidized and you are reducing someone else, therefore we'll call you a reducing agent because you will reduce someone else while being oxidized yourself. Example, aldose sugars can be oxidized. Therefore, they are reducing someone else. What do you call them then? Reducing sugars. Why? Because they are reducing someone else. And why is that? Because the reducing sugars have open chains that expose the carbonyl group to react with the reducing agent, such as the Tollen reagent or the Benedict reagent. How about ketosis? Well, ketosis, only through the process of tautomerization, are capable of giving you the aldose and therefore reducing agents too. But you need this ketoenol shift in order for them to become reducing sugars. Here's an aldo sugar, aldo sugar, aldo sugar, but fructose is a keto sugar. So how can we test for the presence of a reducing sugar, like these monosaccharides, especially the aldoses? Well, you can use the Tollen reagent, also known as the Tollen test, or the Benedict reagent, also known as the Felling test. How do I know that this test turns positive? The color will turn into silver mirror, proving the existence of a reducing sugar in your sample. As for the Benedict reagent or the felling test, copper oxide is produced, which will give you a red precipitate at the bottom of your tube. This is a positive test, i.e. it proves the presence of a reducing sugar. Translation, if these tests turn positive, it means you have a reducing sugar in your sample, such as glucose and galactose, because they are aldoses. How about fructose? Well, it's a ketose, but don't forget the process of tautomerization or the ketoenol shift. 
yeah, fructose also can be a reducing sugar. So in mnemonic time, reducing sugars react with tollen reagent and benedict reagent giving you a positive test. So monosaccharides, reducing sugars. How about disaccharides and polysaccharides? Are not reducing sugar. This is a very good rule of thumb. Okay, medicosis, I ran the test and now I know that I have a reducing sugar. So it could be glucose, galactose, and fructose. How can I test for the presence of glucose specifically? I want to, to I want to prove that this is just glucose. Well, you use glucose oxidase. If it reacts, your sample had glucose. If it did not react, then your sample had something else other than glucose. So that's how you do it. You want to see if there is a reducing sugar in my urine? Well, first order of business. Get me the Tollen reagent or the Benedict reagent. The Tollen test or the failing test. And then what? Positive test means what? Means that this unknown thing, the unknown sugar in the urine, could be glucose, galactose, or fructose. The first two are aldose sugars. The last one is a keto sugar. When these reagents give me a positive test, I know that whatever is in the urine is not a disaccharide. It's not sucrose, maltose, or lactose. And it's not a polysaccharide. It's not glycogen or starch. I mean, why would anyone have starch in the urine? Seriously. Okay, now the test is positive. What do I do next? Well, after this, you perform the glucose oxidase test. Positive test? Well, your sample had glucose. So I have glucosuria or glucose in the urine. But what if the glucose oxidase did not react? Well, then it's not glucose. It is something else. Could be galactose or fructose. You get the idea? It's a very simple concept. Now, this is a very archaic test. Modern labs have way more sophisticated techniques. But if you're stuck in the middle of the desert with a patient <laughs> with sugar in the urine, you can run these tests for sure. Can glucose be seen in the urine during pregnancy? The answer is yes, and it could be normal. Or it could be gestational diabetes. You can learn more about gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, twin twin transfusion syndrome, normal labor and delivery versus abnormal labor and delivery, postpartum complications, twin twin transfusion syndrome, and much more. You can download my OBGYN high yields course right now at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. If you do not want to download my premium courses and would rather watch them right here on YouTube, then click the join button and choose the highest tier. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.